Welcome back to Jack's Tech Corner. This is another video shop element six video tutorial. I'm your host Jack and this tutorial is actually in a response to an email that I received from one of our subscribers named Rick. So Rick thank you very much for asking a question and Rick wants to know once you get these files done or the picture edited how do you save the file? And that's a very very good question and I realize that I haven't been showing you that step and the only reason is is like I said the limitations of YouTube with the 10 minute limitation of the videos. It usually takes me 10 minutes to um, show you everything I have to show you to get you to the point of finishing your picture. So I thought we would pick up from the last picture that I worked on creating a, um, a scrapbook image and I'm going to show you now how to save these files and make it so one you can save the file in case you want to come back and work on it again and two save the file so you can actually send it to a developer and actually have your pictures developed or you know put them on a memory card and take them to your local retail store and print them off now with Photoshop either Photoshop um, you know the CS version or Photoshop elements we save our files in a .psd extension now that's a Photoshop file and most developers will not print a PSD file. That's just basically like a raw working type file. But when you save a file, you want to save it as a PSD so you can always open it up. And then you will have all these layers over here. And as you can see here, the layers, you'll have all these different layers here. And you can come in here and make changes if you, if you need to or if you'd like to make changes to the picture and have all your layers and everything showing. Once we save it as a JPEG file, these layers are going to do what's known as flattening. All these layers are going to come together, and then this will end up being one picture. So all the layers get pushed together, and it's one picture. You can then take that JPEG, that .jpg file, and you will take that out and actually have that developed or email that off to a developer. So here we go. We have our picture open, and we're going to save it. All we have to do is go to File, and we'll do a Save As. And as you see here, see where it comes up and says .psd at the end, this extension right here? That's telling me that's a Photoshop file. You can see right here, it says Photoshop, PSD, or PDD. Now you can give it a different name if you wish. Whatever you want to name this is fine. Let's just say here. We can give it a name that we will recognize. Um, birthday uh, scrap. Something like that, just for a scrapbook file. Now, see where it says here, include in the organizer? That's checked by default, and I would leave that checked. Now, it's going to save in a version set with the original. That's very important. I'll show you that in just a minute. Make sure that's checked. Save. See where it says layers? It's going to save all of our working layers, so we want to leave that checked. And those are all defaulted, so we can just leave those the way they are. Then let's just go ahead and click on Save. Again, this is another one of those messages it's going to tell you it's going to save it in a version set with the original. You have selected to create a version set with this file, da 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 da. Once you get used to seeing this, you can click this box that says Don't Show This Again. Click OK. And it's going to save that file now with the original file that we started working with. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. Now, now once it changes from an hourglass back to a, a, a pointer again, we know we have the file saved. Now let's say we're going to save the file as a JPEG. We know we have it. It looks perfect. That's the way we want it to look. And we're ready to take it to the developer or you know use one of the online developers like we talked about the and we may have talked about, but if not, I'll definitely do a video on it. Um, I use either Shutterfly.com; it's it's a pretty good uh, developing service, or uh, I use .photo.com. It's dotphoto.com. Both of those are very good, very reasonably priced. So we're gonna go to File. This time we're gonna do a Save As, just like before. But now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to change the extension here in the bottom. See where the extensions are? Format. And we can take this off. This underscore edited. And go here and click this pull down menu. 
these are all the different extensions we can save this file as. Now, like I said, I like to save everything at this point as a JPEG. So here we go, jpeg.jpg. Now it's going to once again say, include in the organizer, save in a version set with the original. And it's going to say here, file must be saved as a copy within the section. So it's going to save it as a copy. You can see where it says copy. Because the original picture that we have in there is a JPEG. So it's going to be a copy of that JPEG. Let's click Save. At this point, this box is going to come up and ask you what kind of quality do you want it to be? Now, if I can get that moved over there a little bit. I always set mine to maximum. If you're going to take this out and have it developed, always make sure it's set to maximum. And we can see where we can move it around here a little bit. And there we go. Oh. I don't understand that, why it's moving back and forth on us here. Now, at that point, you can see here, we can take this and we can lower this down a little bit. What that's going to do is lower the basic overall uh, pixels of the picture. So let's say if we're going to post this to the internet and you want grandma to look at it on a dial-up modem or you're going to email it, you could probably lower that down and, and actually email that out or whatever to a smaller file size. But for printing, always make sure you save as a large file size. Once we have that done, we're going to click on OK. And now this is actually going to save the file. When you have the hourglass, that means it's working. It's saving the file. It's back to a pointer. We're good to go. Now let's go back out and look at the differences. So we're going to just take this. And I'll minimize this out of the way. And now. Here is our version set. You can see here this is the one we worked on on the top. And if we click this. Just like I showed you in editing before, it's going to open up that drawer effect. And here's all of our different copies of our picture right here. Okay. If you right click on any of these pictures, you can go down to show properties. This is going to open up our properties window and it's going to tell you what it is. You can see this one's our birthday scrap.psd. We close that. Let's open up this one. Right click on it. Click on show properties. This is also a PSD file. Let's close that one. Right click on it, show properties. Now as you can see, here's our JPEG file. It'll also tell you down here how big the picture is. Right here. It says it's 6.4 megabytes. Now let's look at the, excuse me, look at the differences when we open that up in the editor. Now I'm going to open this picture up. I'm going to right click on it and say go to full edit. At that point, our editor is going to open up. And now, see what I was saying? We open up the JPEG file. See how we have no layers over here? Everything has been combined or, or pushed down into one layer. It's been flattened. And if we open up the PSD file, which is right here, see where it says .psd when I put my mouse on it? If I click on that one, well, you can actually click and drag it up into the editor window and watch. It's going to open that one up. And I'll show you the difference here as soon as it opens as a PSD file. Get it going here in just a second. It takes a little bit of time to load this up with the layers. Okay, now at that point we opened up the PSD file. And you can see now where we have all of our layers back and we can actually work on the picture again. We can add new layers and we can do whatever we have to do with the file itself. That's the two main differences and that's how you save an image. And once you save that, always remember that you're going to print the JPEG file. So if you're going to use an online developer, don't be uploading the PSD files. And if you're going to put them on your flash drive or a thumb drive to take to your local retailer, don't take in the PSD file. Take in the JPEG file. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Hopefully it's going to help you out. And uh, Rick, thank you very much for emailing me and asking me the question. Until next time, keep those uh, cameras clicking and keep editing. I'll see you back here soon. Take care.